guys, it's Andrea from the blog Pine and Prospect Home, and I thought it would be fun to show you guys how I paint faux pumpkins to make them look realistic. So, um, it's actually been rainy and overcast all morning. I made myself a cup of coffee, and then the sun came out. Getting this whole angle was a little bit tricky. I'm going to try to get some close-up shots for you too so that you can follow along if you want to do something similar. Um, but basically I pulled up all of my faux pumpkins from my fall decor bin that I have in my basement. Almost every single one has a bite mark in it or a chunk missing because my two-year-old of course likes to, uh, likes to try to eat them every fall. So um, what you're going to need for this project is a cup of coffee. <laughs> I'll set that right there. I like to use um, larger brushes, like actual artist brushes. I know you could probably use like a foam brush or even those cheap chip style brushes that you can get. But I like the smaller ones because you can really get inside the grooves of your faux pumpkin. And then the colors that I'm using today, these are just cheap acrylic paints from Walmart. They're like, I want to say 50 cents each. I've got this Granite Gray by Apple Barrel, Antique Parchment, English Ivy, this Pavement Color, and this Warm Buff. And we, we are going to mix these up and do all kinds of things with these colors. I also have some newspaper sitting here to paint on. And um, you could use a paper plate if you wanted to. That's what I normally use. But today, I have this. Uh, this is what I use to paint my landscapes with. And um, it's just really easily washable. I picked it up at Hobby Lobby. So one of the things that I like to do when I'm painting faux pumpkins is I like to look at real pumpkins for inspiration. Um, one of the things that is a dead giveaway a lot of times with these faux pumpkins is that they just look too perfect. Like this large one here, it's like all one color, there's no shading, no dimension, nothing. It's just all one solid color. And in most cases, real pumpkins will have some type of imperfection. They're, um, I mean, I'm sure there are perfect uh, real pumpkins out there, but for the most part they have uh, different coloring and shading and things like that. So I think for this pumpkin, I'm going to go with like a bluish grayish color maybe. Uh, we'll see. We'll see where it ends up going. But um, let me just start by putting all of my paint uh, on my palette here. I'm going to start by painting each crevice of this pumpkin a darker color. I'm just going to start by mixing some of this green, and I don't want it to be this dark, I don't think, on this pumpkin. So I'm going to take some of this green, and I'm going to add some of this antique parchment to it, and mix those two together. And I'm getting this really pretty um, sort of light green color here, and I'm just going to go through Oh, that's really pretty. You see that color? And I'm just going right into all the crevices. Doesn't have to be perfect right now. Just kind of go through and do all of those areas. And now I'm going to go through and on all of the raised areas, I'm going to choose, um, I'm going to bring in a little bit of that blue. I think I'm going to try that. So I'm just going to take some of that blue and I might even mix it sort of in with this green that I already had created just to pull in some of that color too. I'm going to add some of that cream again. 
and a little bit of that green as well. dimension to the crevices with a tad darker of a green and we'll see how that looks. I really like the way this is looking so I'm gonna do another technique right now that's called dry brushing and basically you just get most of your paint off the brush by sort of wiping it um, on a paper towel or a newspaper and I'm just gonna go through and really try to smear this paint out and sort of brush it all over the imperfections of this pumpkin and it looks really cool so that they don't look like perfect paint lines. Alright, so we have this really cool looking pumpkin. You can see I went through with that darker green <clears throat> into all the crevices. And basically, really what you want to do with your paintbrush is just honestly kind of smash it and swirl it around. like. I was literally doing that. So I think what I'm going to do now is paint the stem because it's a little bit too red looking. So I'm just going to take um, some of this brown color that I have and then mix it with my green color. Alright, so now it's sort of this light green color, and now I'm just going to go back through and add some more of that brown. Multiple colors. I mean, when you look out into nature, um, no matter what you're looking at, even a blade of grass sometimes has three or four different color greens on it. So you really want to try to incorporate multiple colors. I ended up finding this territorial beige color. I'm going to try that on the stem. See if I like that. So I've got some on my brush here. Let me just dab some excess off. And then I think I like that. So I'm sort of feeling like this color with this color looks a little bit too much like a watermelon. This looks a little bit better. You can see this is obviously um, a process. You just got to keep playing with it until you kind of get the look that you're going for. Um, I'm going to go back over this sort of green yellow that, that I created with uh, by mixing King's Gold with um, that same green. And um, I'm going to kind of go over that a little bit with that antique parchment, maybe, to soften the yellow tones. And then hopefully I'll be done with it. <laughs> oh man, knowing me, I could be messing with this the rest of the day. But at some point, you just have to walk away and be happy with it. So I'm just dragging my brush across with the antique white, just sort of trying to pick up all the imperfections in the pumpkin. 
And then I'm gonna try to get as much excess off my brush as possible here. And I'll go through and really press and swirl and try to get all of those brush strokes out of there. So this is sort of what happens when you sort of just swirl your brush along those lines. It just, I don't know, it gives it this really cool, um, more blended look as opposed to the brush strokes. I think I'm gonna stop here for now. I think you guys can understand the idea of this though, is that you want to combine a lot of different colors, do a lot of different blending. It doesn't have to be perfect. And you just keep messing with it until you kind of get the feel that you are um, going for. But um, I think I'm sort of liking the way this one is looking and uh, I am going to do a couple of mini pumpkins as well and then take photos of the step-by-step -step process for you guys and that way you can go to the blog post. Um, it helps me out so much when you head to my blog post and you pin my images and save the posts for later. So um, I hope this tutorial was a help to you guys. I hope that it inspired you in some way. Maybe you can use some of those um, pumpkins that you already have and create some new colors. So thank you guys again so much for watching. If you are new to my channel, please be sure and hit that subscribe button. Bye guys. See you next time.